You're listening to a message preached from the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church, St. Thomas, Ontario. Acts chapter 1 in your Bibles tonight. If you're by someone they don't have a Bible, would you share with them tonight? I want them to see this verse that we're going to read from. It's always good to share the Word of God with others and to have it yourself. Always come ready with your Bible to Bible Baptist Church. You're going to need it. We use it every service. We read from it all the time. And sometimes I have the congregation read with me. And it's nice that you can do that. And I'm going to do that tonight. In just a moment, we're going to read Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 together. If you want to take a look at it there real quick so that you can follow along. I want to give you this, uh, this message I've entitled tonight, The Burden of Both. The Burden of Both. Of both. I want to draw your attention today, this day, as I've said this morning, to missions. Missions is doing what we are doing just in other parts of the world. So if you can vision church tonight in South America or in Brazil or in um, uh, the Arctic regions of Canada or if you can vision in Russia or Japan or China, that's what missions is getting people together, telling them of Christ instructing them in the Bible, and branching that out so that all people might hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, I hope, brings new beginnings as to how we look at and deal with missions in our church. We have had a wonderful missions program. We've supported some missionaries. We've done some great missions endeavors. But I I would have to say that we've not had a personal relationship with our missionaries the way that I'd like. And that's going to take some time. It's going to take some instruction. It's going to take some reminding to do those things. And I would like to remind you that uh, if you said that you would send an email or a letter to our missionaries today, that I want you to do that as soon as possible before you forget. Maybe you already did that this afternoon or you'll do it tonight after the service and write them and say, hey, listen, we're thinking about you. I saw one of our girls today posted on Instagram. Uh, She said we had Mission Sunday. Sunday today and we're praying for missionaries around the world and that's that's what I want you to do I want you to put it on Facebook I want you to put it on Twitter I want you to put it on Instagram we have a fun time with those things but that's a great way to communicate to other people good things about the things of Jesus Christ and so we're setting forth a standard today of how we're going to do missions differently and I know other churches that do things and have involvement but uh, I want to I want to go over the top a little bit I want to be a little bit more than what maybe others would be. I want us to know our missionaries and to have a a deep concern for them and pray more intelligently for them and to be more involved in the needs that they've got. Today, we step out of the box to change how we see and support and strengthen missions. We must begin by answering a crucial question, that is, why missions? Why do we have a missions program? Why do we support people around the world in the endeavor of missions? And the answer is always found right here in the Bible, God's holy word. Let me show you tonight from Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. We'll read it together and answer the question, why missions? Here we go. Let's read it together. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. Why missions? Because God told us to support missions. That's why. Very simply, God said, I want you to reach the area where you're at, but at the same time, I want you to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice, if you will, the very very important word in that passage, the word both. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. Folks, the word both implies and gives instruction that while we're doing our job here, we need to do that job in those other parts of the world. How do we do that? How do we be in two places at once? Well, we do that through the financial and the prayer and the physical support of those who go out and endeavor to reach those other parts of the world while we stay here and reach our part of the world at the same time. The why of missions is so that the world might know Christ's salvation. That's why. If we just took care of St. Thomas, if we just took care of this part of our world, if we even took care of the province of Ontario and said we're going to reach this part of our world, the rest of the world would be in hardship of knowing the gospel. 
Now, it's important that we take care of this part of our world. Very important. We're going to try and do that through days like Open House Sunday. We're going to do that through a bus ministry. We're going to do that through our help program. We're going to do that through daily talking to people about the things of Christ. But at the same time, there is a need to reach the world. And God said, I want you to be burdened about all of those things at the same time. And so we have a missions program. Winning people here while at the same time the world. Let me show you this first point tonight. Both says on the same schedule, on the same schedule, while you are witnessing in Jerusalem, witness of me both in Judea and Samaria and all the earth, he told the disciples. Now we know it's impossible for us to be in the same uh, same place at the same time in other parts of this world. So then how is that possible? While we are here, someone else must go there. Now, sometimes it'll be people from our congregation. We'll have people that will go to another part of the world and they will take with them the gospel message. And they will go with the intent that they're going to try to win people to Christ and gather them together and form a church. And from that church, they'll instruct those people, discipling them to go out into the world and reach their world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, others from that church around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's really uh, that old commercial. There used to be an old shampoo commercial. It says uh, uh, they used the product, and, and they told two people, and they told some people, and they told some people, and pretty soon the screen was filled with people that were using that shampoo product. I'm going to tell someone about Jesus Christ in hopes that they'll tell some people about Jesus Christ. And while I'm telling other people about Jesus Christ, they're going to tell other people about Jesus Christ. And the people that get saved from those people that are telling people are going to tell other people. And pretty soon we can engulf the whole world world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I'll tell you what, we have about 7 billion people on this planet right now. And it's been figured by mathematicians and people way smarter than me that if every person would win one person to Christ, and that person that gets one that gets one would tell another person about Christ and lead them to Christ, it would take a very short time for the entire world to know Christ as their savior. Now the only problem with that is not everybody we talk to gets saved. Not everybody's going to receive the gospel. I got a phone call this week from some friends of mine up in Simcoe, and they said, Pastor, would you go up and visit a family member of ours in the hospital here in St. Thomas? He's not doing well. He has cancer. He has brain cancer, and he is not doing well. Would you go up and see him and give him the gospel? And uh, so I called Brother Yeomans. I said, Brother Yeomans, let's go. We're going to make a hospital call together. And we went up, uh, I believe it was on Thursday morning, Friday, Thursday morning, I think it was. And uh, we went up to the room, and I found the gentleman, and I introduced myself and began to talk to him about the things of the Lord. And I said, sir, I'm going to be very honest with you. I know that you're not a well man. I know that you've got cancer. I know that the cancer is very aggressive, and I know that your time on this earth is probably shorter than you wish it to be. I said, we pray for a miracle. We ask God to give you an extension of life. But I said, if that doesn't happen, you're, you're not going to have much longer in this life. I'm not going to play games with you today. I'm going to be very honest with you and let you know that your time to make a decision for Christ is now. And I went through the gospel, and I told him how I'd been saved. And I said, sir, now it is your opportunity to receive the things of Jesus Christ. Would you like to bow your head with me and receive Christ as your Savior? And here's what he said. I think I'll wait. I think I'll wait. I, I'm flabbergasted when I hear those things. I've got to be honest with you. I'm kind of shocked and taken back by those things. I said, sir, you've been laying in this bed, and I know this, having led, uh, laid in a hospital bed for a little time. I said, you've thought a great deal about life, haven't you? Oh, yes. I said, you've thought about death, haven't you? Oh, yes. I said, sir, it's time to think seriously about where you're going to spend eternity. I said, I don't know you, but I said, I can almost guarantee that in your life and the things that you've been thinking about over these last few weeks is that there's an emptiness in your life. There's a void in your life. You're thinking about how can I fill that void? I said, that void is Jesus Christ. I said, and I can show you how to be saved today. And he said, no, I'm not going to get saved. I said, sir, I said, really, what have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? And he said, no. I prayed with him, asked if I could pray, and we prayed together. And I prayed again, asking that he would receive Christ. I told him he, I didn't have to be there. We didn't have to be there. I hope and pray that sometime in the days that he has left, that he will bow his head and humble himself before God. And get saved. Folks, not everybody's going to get saved, but I'll tell you what, we have a commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want everyone to know, I want everybody in this world to know that there is a hope of eternal life. That, that little girl that came this morning, she's not a little girl, she's a teenager, a little girl to me, that little 17-year-old girl, 16-year-old girl, she came forward and said, I want to get saved, I want to know Christ, I want to have that hope of eternal life. 
She sat down here last Sunday morning and I'm preaching away and I could look, I could see that she was grasping every word that I was saying. And this morning she found Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome when people get saved? Isn't it awesome when they say, I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to, I'm going to endeavor to give my whole life to the things of Christ. What a transformation it makes in people's lives. What a transformation it made in my life. And I'm paying a debt. I told this gentleman, I said, I'm repaying a debt. When my pastor came and led me to Christ, when he showed me how to be saved, he said, I want you to take that message to everybody that you can. And so every person I talk to, I tell them I'm, I'm, I'm filling a debt here. I'm telling people about Christ because someone told me about Christ. If you think about it, unless that person that led you to Christ was your parents, somebody probably had to come from somewhere else to tell you about Jesus Christ. And folks, isn't that really just missions in action? My pastor lived in Toronto. He started two churches in the Toronto area and came to Simcoe. I don't know why he did that other than the call of God. And obviously God had a great call in his life. But he left Toronto and the hubbub of Toronto. And he was a Toronto guy. He loved the city. He drove back to Toronto for years to get his hair cut by the same barber. He'd had his hair cut for, year, for, for years. I, I never understood that. But he, that was his home for a long time. And he came to Simcoe. Little tiny town, church that was older and struggling a little bit. Man, God got a hold of that thing. He was a missionary. He came from another place, a different culture, a different speed of life, to little town, slow town, downtown Simcoe. And if for no other reason, he came to lead me to Jesus Christ. And folks, I've endeavored in my life, and you're endeavoring in your life to tell as many people as we can about Jesus Christ. Every person that you see needs Christ. We had a gentleman come last night, and he kind of reminded me of the need of missions in our town. We had a very unusual man come last night. Uh, Mr. Westlake called and said, I'm going to bring a gentleman to the barbecue uh, tomorrow night. I hope it's all right. And I said, you can bring anybody you want. And talked to one of our guys. said, yeah, bring him. And there's a gentleman in our town. He's, I think he worked at Ford's for a while, and, and uh, he's a little different. He's a little different. He's got tattoos all over his face. He's got a bald head. He's got tattoos all over his, all over his head. He's got tattoos of eyeballs on his eyelids. So when he closes his eyes, he's still looking at you. I want to tell you, it's, it's, it's a little freaky, I got to tell you. And uh, uh, he showed up and he's got big rings on, a couple skulls over here and different things. And, and uh, he came in and, and I think he expected for our guys to snub him. I think he expected a little bit to be to kind of be put off. And, and I'll tell you why he's done those tattoos. And I'll tell you why he dressed that way, because he wants to shock people. I, I think he wants to push the envelope to find out who's really real in this world. And so he came in and I said, hey, Bill, welcome. We're glad you're here tonight. He looked at me. He said, really? I said, yeah, we're glad you're here. We're glad you came tonight. I'm, I'm glad Doug brought you tonight. He said, hey, let me introduce you to some guys. And some of our guys knew him from Ford's. Some of you seen around town. He used to ride a big old three wheel trike. They call him Snake. Yeah. And so he comes in and man, we had him come in and introduce him to some guys and he sat and talked to some guys and had a hamburger. He left. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you, I had a great time tonight. Thank you so much for letting me come. I said, Bill, we're glad you came tonight. Our church, folks, is a hospital for sick people. It's a place for people that have a need. It's a place for people that struggle in this life. It's a, it's a place for people who maybe don't look that different, but on the inside they're different. They have a need. They're grasping, looking for something. This place is a mission field uh, uh, trying to help others in the things of Jesus Christ. And so here we're trying to win people to Christ on the same schedule. While you're witnessing Jerusalem, witness of me in Judea, Samaria, and all the earth, Jesus said. While we are here, someone else must go there. And while we endeavor to reach our Jerusalem of St. Thomas, at the same time, we need to reach our Judea. I'd like to think of our Judea as Ontario. This is our province. This is the out, out, uh, outlying area of our Jerusalem. It's where we live. It's where we travel. Now, Ontario is a huge province. If, if we had to pick a place to live to cover, we, we picked a, a, the right one. It, it's a big place. I understand. I've had some folks tell me I've never done this, but I understand that if you start driving here in St. Thomas, if you go down to Pelee Island, which is the southernmost part of, of our province, if you go down to Pelee Island and begin driving north, it, it's almost a 36-hour drive until you come to the end of the roads in the province of Ontario. This is a massive province. It's a 24-hour drive to Orlando. Florida to give you an idea how big our province is. 
And there are people in every region of this province of Ontario that we are endeavoring to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ, while at the same time trying to give the gospel here. We're doing that through providing John and Romans. We're getting ready to, to mail to the northern part of Ontario. We'll go up into the, the, the northernmost regions. A lot of those are, are uh, native villages and, and native communities. And, and a lot of those are logging camps and, and uh, mining communities. And so we want to get the gospel up there and tell them that Jesus Christ loves them. And we're going to have a help program over in Cambridge in July. And so we're going to try to reach that part of our Judea as well. While at the same time, continuing on the work here, I think of our Samaria as Canada. Samaria, in this instance, was an opportunity for Jesus to say to the disciples, there can be no discrimination in where you go with the gospel. You know the stories. Jesus said, I must needs pass through Samaria, but it was not common for the Jews to go through Samaria. They were a, a hated people by the Jews, and the Samaritans hated the Jews because uh, the, the uh, Jews would not allow the Samaritan people to help build the temple. We saw that this morning in uh, uh, foreigners wanting to come in and assist in the building of the walls of Jerusalem. And, and Hosea said, no, 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 that's, that, that's uh, not, not for you, or not Hosea, um, uh, Nehemiah said, no, that's not for you to do. We heard that last night. Hosea said that uh, in the worship, it was Hosea that said, listen, I, we're going to take care of rebuilding the worship here. And they said, we're not going to let you do it. And so the Samaritans were very upset by that. And so there were some hostilities. There were some half-breeds in, in the mix of those people. And so they were outcasts. Jesus said, you can't discriminate with the gospel. You've got to go to people that you may not like. You've got to go to people that may not like you. And so there are parts of our country that maybe we would discriminate against. Maybe there's some who've come to our country that we would discriminate against. Jesus said, you can't do that. You've got to take the gospel to all people. You've got to take the gospel to every creature because God created them and God loves them. And God doesn't see a different culture. He doesn't see a different skin color. He doesn't see a different background. He sees people that have a need of the gospel. And folks, we can't discriminate either. Every part of our nation needs the gospel. And then he says this, to the uttermost parts of the world. Folks, that's where missions really kicks in for us, I think. That idea of going outside of the boundaries of Canada, North America, to the other parts of this world. Beyond our shores is that uttermost parts. I believe we're doing that. And we're doing it well. We're doing it well in reaching our nation through bearing precious seed and our health program and, and our daily visitation and tracts and all of those things. And at the same time, we have an extension of our mis uh, ministries through our missionaries that are reaching out into the world as well. Why missions? To be obedient to God's instruction to reach everyone with the gospel at the same time. Here's the second thing. Both says with the same significance. With the same significance. Notice, if you will, that there is no differentiating between those places. He doesn't put a heavier, heavier in, uh, emphasis on Jerusalem than he does the uttermost parts of the world. They're all the same. All of them need the gospel at the same time with the same type of effort. We have well established and solidified our work here. And for over 40 years, uh, support works abroad through the Bible Baptist Church. Every year we endeavor to do more by our faith missions program. Now, there should be a couple of slides. And there they are. And so we're going to bring that first one up. And it talks about faith. By faith, trusting God to supply an amount not within our power for us to give to missions to prove his supply. So we have these little cards tonight. And I want to go through this again for folks that are maybe just new with us and, and haven't done this before. But, but these little cards are something that we've used for years. It's a faith promise missions card. It's just something that we took from someone else and, and uh, redid it up a little bit to fit our church. But there's two parts to this card. And the one small part is an opportunity for us to fill in an amount of money that we're going to endeavor to give to missions this year as an individual to the church. Now, my wife and I discussed this today, and we came up with an amount. We already give to missions on a weekly basis. And every year since we've been married, 29 years, we have endeavored every year to increase what we give to our missions program. Some years, we have, by faith, given a, a quite a jump. We've gone, gone quite a bit and said, you know, we're just going to trust God to do something extra special this year. In other years, we've said, you know what? We're going to give a modest increase. We're going to give more. Uh, it's more than we can really do by what we have, but we're going to trust the Lord. And I'll tell you this. 
this, in 29 years of giving to Faith Promise Missions, we have never done without. We have never had to miss uh, paying our mortgage payment. We have never been without a decent vehicle to drive. We've never gone out without having a meal. Uh, God has always provided in our supply what we give to missions. And I want to encourage you tonight. Every one of us ought to do something by way of missions. Now, I will tell you this. The first thing we need to take care of is the tithe. We need to give that 10%, that gross income, uh, in the supply of God's work right here. Now, folks, think about this. Doesn't it make sense that we would feed our family and take care of our family before we take care of the neighbor's family? Doesn't that make sense? That makes sense to you tonight? Say amen. If Brother Holland said, Pastor, I, I need some help. I, I've got a family over here, and, and I, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm trying to do the work, and, and I don't think I'm going to make it. Listen, if my kids don't have food to eat, as much as I'd want to help them, I'm going to take care of my family first. I'm going to make sure they're strong and healthy and, and that they're able to go. And then I'm going to supply for others. Listen, I want you to know tonight, our family, our church family, is strong and healthy, and we're taking care of business here in our church. Uh, we're making the bills. We're, we're forwarding our program and our ministry of our church and we're doing well and now it's time to look at others and say hey there's some others that have need uh, there's some others that want to do other things and we're able to supply for them and that's faith promise missions we said god give us something that we can't do so that as we do it we know that it has to be your supply It's got to be God that's doing it. By faith, by faith, I'm going to endeavor to give an amount that I don't think I can afford to give to watch God supply my need. That is faith, promise, missions. Now that's the faith part. The promise is this. There's also a bigger part of that card, and it says, In dependence upon God, I will endeavor to give above my regular tithes and offerings each week for one year for the worldwide missionary work of our church, the amount checked in the column to the right. And then there's a place to put that amount to remind you. I am promising tonight, as I put this in the plate when we collect them at the end of the service, I am promising tonight for the next year to give that amount towards missions. And what we're going to do with that is we are going to uh, bolster the, the amount of money that we're giving to the missionaries that we now have. You got that sheet this morning. If you didn't get one, please get one from the missionaries. We have a full color sheet with all of our missionaries on there and their contact information. We're going to raise the support of the missionaries that we already have. On top of that, anything that we take in over and above uh, that amount that we're going to do for them, we want to do some special projects. Next year at Christmas time, we are going to again collect a special offering for home and away. We're going to do something here at home, take care of the needs of our church. But at the same time, we want to do something greater in giving to missionaries. And we've got some that have some special projects that they want to do. They have a building. They have a need of a bus. they, They want to do a clinic. They want to do something. And we want to be a part of that. And so through our giving to missions, over and above our regular tithe, we can extend our ministries of our church. That's faith promise. We turn, uh, we in turn promise to give that amount, come what may, till this time next year. And I say come what may because here's what's going to happen. I promise you. You're going to take and fill that card out. You're going to drop it in the offering plate. And next week the tire is going to go on your car. Or the kids are going to need braces. Or you're going to get laid off for a few weeks. Something's going to happen to test your faith and your commitment to that promise. Please do this. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Your hand's going to shake. You're going to think, how can I do it? How can I do it? You put it in and watch how the Lord provides. Now, I'll tell you this. What, this is what the Lord does for me. I've got a roof on my house And I built my house at the same time as everybody else in my neighborhood, about the same time, within a few years. All of my neighbors are replacing their roofs. It's about 15 years, and roofs last about 15 years. Can I tell you folks that I went out and my roof is still in good shape? I've still got another couple of years before I'm going to have to replace the roof of my house. I've got some shingles on the backside that are just beginning to curl a little bit, and maybe this summer will take a greater toll, but I'll tell you this, everybody else has already done theirs, and God has given me an extension of time by allowing my roof to last a little bit longer. Now, why has that happened? I don't know. I think it's because of faith, promise, missions. You know, I've had my car for, my car's almost 14 years old, still runs good. I've got some guys that help me look after that and keep that thing going the way it's supposed to. And they said, Pastor, you got another couple of years in that car. You better start looking for another one. But I, if I can limp that thing along for a little bit longer, I, I've had a full 14, 15 years out of that car. Why is that? 
I, I think because of Faith Promise Missions. God has done work after work after work in my life. And folks, I'll tell you, the only, the only thing I can tell you why we've got what we've got and done what we've done is because we've been faithful to Faith Promise Missions. We have tried to do for others while at the same time taking care of the work of the Lord here at home. And I encourage you to try and do the very same thing. Every member of our church should be participating in our missions program. Every one of us. Not one of us should set it aside. See, we can all do something. We can all do something. As we see a need, we give the gift. Now, I, I had a challenge years ago. Brother Dale Atkins was here, and I thought one of the greatest things I've ever heard about missions, he said, what you give to missions will determine what you see as the need of missions. If you don't give anything to missions, you don't see a need. There's no need to give to missions. Everybody's okay. Listen, the missionaries are doing a great job. They don't need any more. There's no more need in this world for missions. If you don't give, you don't see an importance to it. If you give some, you see some need. I'm going to help do something. If you give an abundance, you see that there's an abundant need of the need of missionaries around the world. And folks, I've got to tell you tonight, as I travel and as I listen and as I watch, there's a need of missionaries around this world and the support of missions. I want you to give. I want you to give something. Start out with a little. Start out with something. Start out and see what God will do and trust him and, and put him to the test of faith. While we now continue to build upon this work, it is our responsibility to spread the gospel outward. Why missions? To as quickly as possible reach everyone with the gospel at the same time. And then here's our final thing tonight. Both says, with the same sensitivity. All peoples of all lands, of all color, of all creed, everyone is due the gospel message. Everyone. Everyone. The picture you see is uh, uh, someone walking with, with uh, two small children, loving both of those children, helping both of those children. I want to get this message across, across that there's a sensitivity there to, say, to those children the same. There's, there's no difference. There's not one being left behind. They're both being cared for. And folks, uh, with the same sensitivity that we give to winning people here, we should have that sensitivity abroad. With that same concern that we have here, we need to have that concern for people in other lands. For the same concern that we have people here, here in this city, in this province, in this country, we need to reach those in countries where they have very little, where, where the greatest need they have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm all for uh, social programs, and I'm all for helping to feed people, and I'm all for getting them a shelter, but I'll tell you this, if we build them homes, and we give them gardens, and we supply them with money, and we don't give them the gospel, we have done them a disfavor. They need the gospel. They need the gospel. I say let's do both at the same time. I love what Brother Mac is doing. He's got a clinic and, and he has people come to the clinic and they provide for them uh, health care. Uh, they once a month open it up to the community and have hundreds if not thousands of people come. They give them a John and Romans. They preach to them. They introduce them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't have to get saved to get medical attention, but they offer that to them because he has said this, what good is it if we make them healthy and they die and go to hell? <laughs> Brother Edmondson, who some of our folks have been on medical mission trips with, has the same philosophy. He wants to give people the gospel. And he uses that medical attention to draw them so that he can give them that gospel. You say, well, that's kind of underhanded. That's kind of sneaky, isn't it? No, absolutely not. They know when they come. They know who it's being put on by. They know the purpose of what's going on. And so they have them come in and introduce them to the gospel. And many get saved. Not all, but many get saved. And all get treated and I think that's an awesome thing, a great way to reach some of those things. I'd love to see in time a missionary representation on every continent that we, that, that we have. Now, the Antarctic, Antarctica, we really can't count that unless we're going to win penguins to Jesus Christ. That's not in the scope, all right? But let's take the six uh, continents of the seven. We have four of the six continents covered. We have uh, missionaries in North America, Africa, Europe, and Asia. If we could get South America and Australia, that part of the world, we would have missionaries on every continent. Now, that's going to come in time. This year, I don't want to take on missionaries, new missionaries. I want to bolster the ones that we've got. I want to raise them up a little bit. And in the next few years, I want to look for a missionary to cover those continents so that we could say that we've gone to the uttermost parts of our world. And then from there, we'll start duplicating missionaries on some of those fields so that we can do more in those other parts of our world. We support Faithway Baptist College. As part of our missions endeavor, one of our young men's home tonight, Anthony's home tonight. You've heard from him already. And uh, Anthony went to Bible school this year. And Anthony has studied the things of the Word of God. Now, I want to tell you that going to Bible school this year taught Anthony much more than just the Bible. Amen? Would you agree with that? He learned some valuable lessons. He learned how to be away from home. 
He had to learn some work ethics. He had to learn how to handle some finances. He had to learn how to live with other people that come from different backgrounds and, and different ideals and live within that community. He had to learn to be away from home and his church. And he learned some great lessons. I think it's important that our young people get away to a Bible college. I try to encourage every young person to go for at least one year to a Bible college somewhere and get grounded in the things of the Word of God. Learn those responsibilities away from home and, and grow in the doctrine that they, they learn and need in their own lives. Not because mom and dad say it or the church says it, but because they've learned it from the Word of God. So we support a Bible college to help train young men and women so that they can, in, in our country and other countries of the world, take the gospel of Jesus Christ. At the same time, we support a, a ministry work called Baptist Church Planting Ministries. That's Brother Earl Jessup. Brother Jessup has planted, I believe, around 35 or 40 churches here in Canada, while at the same time establishing churches in, in uh, the United States and, and parts of Europe and Africa. He's had a hand in the work with the Mickeys and uh, uh, Brother Mac as well in helping to establish churches and getting people to come and pastor those churches. And I love that. I love the idea of taking young men from Bible college and establishing a church work and, and flourishing those works. And then we support the Salvation Evangelistic Association. That's Dr. Clayton. Dr. Clayton's been a good friend of our family and of our church for many, many years. And he has traveled and preached the gospel and been faithful. He has had tent revivals all over North America, many parts of the world. He loves the Philippines. He's helping an orphanage there in the Philippines. He's helped establishing churches in the Philippines. And I love a man that has a vision of taking the gospel to the world. We support our Bearing Precious Seed Ministry, which is very near and dear to our hearts, and I don't have to say a lot about that tonight, but we're endeavoring to put a gospel of John and the book of Romans in every home in Canada. Man, I was so thrilled to be able to give one of those to our prime minister. I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying, and you pray this with me. I'm praying that our prime minister looks at that and says, hey, that's a great idea. I'm hoping he looks at that and says, man, our country needs that. I hope he looks at that and says, you know, our country needs to get back to this kind of thing. We need to get prayer back in our schools. We need to get the Bible back in the lives of our children. We need to get the name God back in our, our legislative assemblies. We need to get God back in the homes of our country. I'm praying that God would touch his heart with that. And then we have our help program, a missionary endeavor of our church to go into other communities and tell those communities of Christ. We're going to take about 100, 125 people from here, our church and other churches in Ontario. We've got a church coming from Michigan, uh, Michigan this year. We've got a church from Ohio coming. And they're going to join with us and help us to tell boys and girls and moms and dads about Jesus Christ in Cambridge, Ontario. The church there just bought a new church building. Uh, they moved in a completely different neighborhood of that city. We were there a few years ago. They were out in the country, and it really was in a great location, but they were doing a good job and staying with it. They were able to purchase a building for a very reasonable amount, and they're endeavoring to fill that building, and we want to go and help them with that. We want that entire community around that church to know that that church is there. We want them to know that they're preaching the gospel. We want them to know that they care about children and boys and girls and teenagers and moms and dads. And so we're going to go, and we're going to spend our time doing that. We have a good handle on home missions by supporting new church works and donating John and Romans to the starts of those churches. The question is, why missions? Well, to answer it once again, to as quickly as possible reach everyone with the gospel at the same time. And folks, tonight we have some great missionaries and some great outreach agencies. The goal now is to do this. Number one, to get to know them better. As I said this morning, we have a list, we have names, we have contact information. I want you to go home and pick a missionary tonight, anyone you want. You can start at the beginning uh, on either side of the page. Let's take the Bartleys here. I want you to go home and I want you to see that the Bartleys... Um, uh, uh, have some birthdays. Uh, Brother Bartley was born on September 20th, 1962, and his wife Faith Ann was born October 25th, 1966. Do we have anybody here that has a birthday on September 20th? Anybody have that day? You do. Kathy, that's your birthday? What's that? Jackson's birthday. Well, I'll tell you what, when you celebrate his birthday, would you get hold of Brother Bartley and say, hey, my son has the same birthday as you. Happy birthday. And every year, send him a birthday card and say, you share a birthday with my son. And, and, and as your son Jackson gets older, you can say, hey, there's a missionary that has the same birthday as you. And tie those two together. Anybody have a birthday on October 25th? Anybody have a birthday October 25th? I know we have some that are a little bit past that. Uh, McGlynn's are right around the 31st, 31st of October. 25th, anybody? All right, they, she doesn't get a card then. She's out. Um, <laughs> Diana, their daughter, is August 18th. Now, I know we have a lot of August babies. Anybody on the 18th? 
Mrs. Cyrus, is that your birthday, the 18th? Here is your new birthday pal right there. Right there. That little girl can get a birthday card or an email from you and say, Hey, Diana, I want you to know it's my birthday too. And I praise the Lord that I have somebody that has the same birthday as me. And I'm praying for you today. Maybe send her a card. Maybe send her a little gift. Say, Hey, listen, we're tied together as you're there serving the Lord in St. Lucia. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go down and celebrate your birthday with her in St. Lucia all expenses paid by your husband. And you can have a great time now that your girls will kick in and do that for you. It'd be great. Their anniversary is July the 16th. Anybody have an anniversary on July the 16th? Anybody at that time? All right. If you did, wouldn't it be awesome to say, hey, we're going out for our anniversary. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barley, we want to send you out for your anniversary just because we love you, because we share that same date. Man, there's all kinds of different dates and birthdays and things on there. If you can't find one, adopt somebody. Change your birthday to a different time. Say, hey, I'm going to celebrate two birthdays this year, yours and mine. Have cake twice, it'd be great. Folks, you could, you could send them a little card, you could send them a little drawing, some of you kids. We, we could do all kinds of things just to let them know that we want to know them. Why don't you write your missionaries? Ladies, would you do this for me? Would you write some of those missionary ladies and say, how are you doing, really? Are you lonely? Are you homesick? Do you struggle at all? I want you to know that I'm praying for you and I care for you. We, we don't have to get too personal, but you know, you could maybe just say, you know, the Lord laid you on my heart, and, and I don't know why I thought about you, but th th I thought maybe just you could use a word from home today. You know what you could do? I know ladies like this. You could send them some, some baking goods that they don't have where they're at. I know that Nick and Alicia said one of the things that they don't have over in England are a lot of the spices that we have, especially like tacos, spices, and things like that. They grew up having the famous uh, Unger nachos and all that kind of stuff. They don't have some of those things. So my wife got some of those things. Did you send them over? Did, did, did you do that? She got a package of those things together and sent them over. Man, they were thrilled to get some spices from home. They don't have those there. One of our girls this morning said, you know what it costs to send things to, to overseas? And I said, well, it can be very costly. I know that my wife spent probably way more in the postage of getting it over there than the spices cost. But you know what? She said, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just thrilled that I can do that for that couple that meant so much to us. Uh, Alicia worked in her class on Wednesday night. She loves Alicia. She said she was a great worker in her class. She said, I'm so excited for them. Hey, listen, they're going to have a baby. Do you think maybe you could send them something for a baby? You think maybe you say, hey, listen, we want to get you a little outfit. And maybe it's too much to send it over and say, hey, here's a little gift card or here's something. Or maybe when they're home and their folks are going over or something, just say, hey, if you're going over, give this to them for me. Just say, hey, we, we love you. We, we, we're thankful for the time that we had with you. We're thankful that we were able to impart a little bit in your lives. I'll tell you what it mean in the world. I, when we did the, the Skype thing and we're able to see them, man, that's awesome. Brother Chris was saying last night, so neat just to be able to see them and talk with them. We want to do more of that this year so that we can say, hey, here's our church. See our church and, and know our church. And we want to know you. Here's the second thing. We want to have better contact from them. I've written our missionaries, every one of them, and said, I want to have a video from you once a quarter. I want you to send us something of your services, of your programs, some special events. I said, we, we, we want to know about your family, but in that video, I want to know more about your church. I want to know how to better pray for you. I, I want to see the faces of your people. I, I want them to see us. I think it'd be neat if we could do it. Sometimes the time difference throws it off, but I would love to be able to show their people our service and all of you, and man, we're saying hi, and we're amen, and we're singing, and we're doing those things. It'd be great for them to have that connection. Thirdly, to do special projects to assist them. Uh, there are things that every ministry needs, and, and I don't know what those will be. We'll wait to see what they are as they come in. But I told those guys, I said, as I mailed that out, I said, whoever answers first are going to be the people that we try to assist first. And the two people that responded back very quickly was Brother Mac and, and Brother Jeremy Benbrooks. I'd love to do something for them. Just say, hey, we're going to keep our word. We're, we're going to do something over and above what we normally do to assist them. I would love, I mentioned to our guys last night, I want to take our guys on some mission trips. I, I want to take some of our guys and build a building. I want to take some of our guys and maybe do a cleanup around a building. I want, to, I want to go and paint a building. And somebody said this morning, preacher, is it better if we just send the money? And I'll tell you what, it's good to send the money, and sometimes that's, that's more effective way, but I'll tell you this, there's something about going, going out of our way to go beyond and say, listen, we, we didn't care about the cost, we just wanted to come and see, we wanted to be a part, we wanted to join with you, we want your people to see that we care enough to come. I'll tell you, when we went to, when we went to Africa, fellas, 
And we went to those services. Didn't we see that? Didn't we see the thrill in the faces of those people as we came? Brother Charbonneau, what a blessing. Brother Charbonneau tried to, uh, he and I worked together and, and I did some preaching and he interpreted for me in French because it's a French speaking nation. Man, it was so awesome to have him to be able to converse with the people, and it was a little bit different. He thought he struggled, but I thought he did a great job. And those people thought it was so neat that somebody came from another country and spoke their language and endeavored to, to communicate with them. It was so awesome. And I'll tell you what, there's probably not very many days go by that you guys don't think about that trip and see that building and see those people. Man, it has an impact in your life. Some of our kids went to St. Lucia. Where are the kids that went to St. Lucia? Raise your hands for me. Uh, Tyler went to St. Louis. Tyler, do you ever think back on that trip? Do you ever think about those kids that you saw? I know that Nate, uh, what would what, they call that guy from, from England? Mr. Maker? Is that who it was? Was that the guy's name? I guess there was some guy on TV that they watched down there, and it, it's kind of like Art Attack. They used to have Art Attack, and the guy made things. Well, they thought Nate looked like this Mr. Maker. And so when he went into the schools, Mr. Maker's here, Mr. Maker's here. And Nate can't make anything at all. <laughs> He makes a mess pretty good, but that's about it. But man, he went in, those kids loved it. They did puppet shows. Those kids loved it. Who else went? Who else went? Jimmy, you went too, didn't you? Didn't you break something in uh, St. Lucia? Yeah, I remember that. Jim's famous all over the world for breaking things. Did you have a good time? Did it impact your life? Would you love to go back? Do you ever think about those kids? They went to some services. Man, they, our kids loved the music in St. Lucia. Nate was Mr. Tambourine Man. They had the tambourine there. And they, man, they hit the tambourine, and their music's a little more lively than ours would be, but it's kind of that island music. They came home, our kids showed us those pictures. Man, they loved it. Carrie, you went there, didn't you? You went to St. Lucia. What do you remember about St. Lucia? What was one of the things that impacted you? Almost getting killed. Yes, the, the driving there is rather unique. I, they had a driving experience, if I remember. Yeah, tiny little van. And, and that's what they've got. You know, I know that those folks in St. Lucia, I know that Brother Holland's kept in contact. You know, they have a need of a bus there. They'd love to get a bus or something, or more of those vans to get more people to church. That, that's the only way they're going to get them there. Those folks don't have cars. And so if they can provide transportation, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we could provide a, a vehicle for those people in St. Lucia and go down there and fill it up for them? Wouldn't that be awesome? Folks, we can do those things. It's possible for us. The final thing is we want to increase their monthly support. Again, as I mentioned, most of them, you know, if, if a church drops their support or if the, the dollar drops, it really, it really makes a, a major impact on how much money they have coming in and, and not knowing each month or year to year what's coming in. That, that can be a very stressful thing. And so to say to them, hey, listen, we're not going to drop your support. We're going to increase your support. I'll tell you what, they'll be thrilled. They'll be thrilled, even for a, a few more dollars a month that they don't have to worry about, that they can add to what they've already got to be able to take care of the ministry of Christ. And in time, we want to take on more missionaries to be able to do the same for them. Now, here's the question. The question now is, by faith, what by faith are you willing to do that we might promote and provide for the work of our missionaries? What are you prepared to do? What do you think God would have you to do? Of what great faith value would you put on the work of missions this year? We trust you've enjoyed this message preached at the Bible Baptist Church of St. Thomas, Ontario, pastored by Dr. Al Stone. We invite you to be a part of our worship service this Sunday 